presentation. Uh, we certainly hope this time we don't have the technical difficulties, which were not Kyle's fault. Um, they probably were mine. And if anything goes wrong with part of this, it also will be my fault. Uh, Derek, Derek Diggs. Thank you. My name is Derek. I also did a research project as did Kyle, and my project was on uh, film camera techniques and their effect on the uh, entertainment qualities of film. My research advisor for this was Mr. Clemente, and Mr. Clemente and Ms. Mosquet Patterson both supervised uh, me and my actors while we were filming. Uh, we have a couple of different locations. The only ones you're going to see in the final film are the Ocean Lake Scola and the Ocean Lake Gymnastics Room. Um, the other locations here um, didn't make it to the final cut. Um, you see Clayton Stagg up at the top there and Kyle, both of them are at Mount Trashmore um, for one of our sequences. And then Jeff Hodges right there for the Great Neck sequence. Um, again, none of those made it to the final cut. Um, we also filmed in various places like the Rock Gym, um, our houses, um, lots of different locations for this film. A little bit of background information on the film industry. Um, it's essentially started around 3000 BC when the Egyptians were reported to have used uh, shadow puppets for entertainment. Um, there were no real significant advances in this art for a couple of thousand years until the Chinese around 121 BC developed figurines that again cast shadows but they used little figures that were posable to tell a story. Um, also from around that time there was a little box developed called the camera obscura which is pictured to my, to my left. Um, it pretty much it was used mostly for scientific, scientific observation of celestial bodies. An image went in, there was no lens, an image went in and it was imprinted on a photographic plate on the other side. Uh, the image was a little bit smaller and it was inverted. Um, that was the only significant advance until the late 1800s when the modern, as we think of, cameras were developed, which were developed with high enough shutter rates to capture multi, like a sequence of uh, frames that would actually tell a story rather than just one picture. Um, at night, from 1900 to 1950 is when you saw the most rapid and most prolific growth of the movie industry. That's when we came out uh, first, uh, as most of you probably know, uh, film started black and white, no sound, and maybe a little bit of piano music. Um, sound was introduced, and then Technicolor was introduced around 1920 or so. And around 1950, um, post-World War II is when we saw the next big jump. And that's what really, from 1950 to present day, is our next grouping of films. That's when we see more high definition uh, sound, more uh, better video, better color in our videos, and really more developed, I'll argue, more developed uh, plot lines for most of the movies. Um, the objective of this study, as I said previously, was to determine a style of cinematography that would enhance the quality of a film. Um, I refer to a book called The Five C's of Cinematography. Uh, the five C's are cutting, close-ups, continuity, camera angles, and <laughs> materials. I had a camera. Um, you see two cameras pictured there. That one right there is mine, and that's what I really would have liked to have. Um, the one I had did fine, except the sound was not very good. I would have also liked to have uh, some sort of sound from like a microphone or with an extendable boom or something to capture that better. But um, for our purposes, uh, the camera on the bottom worked. I used Movie Maker 2 extensively to edit all of my film. We had a tin and cookies for props, lots of ibuprofen for our actors, and there wasn't, really wasn't a whole lot of other props, no, uh, not a lot of extra stuff. All right, this procedure has two columns. Um, yes, they do pretty much show the same thing, except on the right you will see what should have happened, and on the left you see what did happen. Um, as you can tell, when actually doing the film, there was a lot of complications um, as far as scheduling, uh, equipment problems, we had a camera break a couple times, uh, we could rarely get all of the actors together to coordinate a film shoot um, and locations. Uh, for instance, uh, you'll see later when we're at Mount Trashmore, there were little kids running around everywhere and we couldn't really film anything because they would always be in the shots and stealing our stuff. <laughs> uh, procedure continued. Um, this uh, deals with the analysis part of my film. Uh, this is after we finished making the film. I showed it to a class, Mrs. Poles, 1B history class, and we surveyed the class for their thoughts on the film. Uh, the survey question, there were about 10 questions. The only question I was really interested in uh, was, was this film entertaining? And it was stated as you see it on the screen, this film was entertainment, enter entertaining. Uh, the students assessed the validity of this statement uh, based on a rating from one to five, one being the lowest. 
and I compiled the results. Uh, before that, I had to make up an, a hypothesis, and my null hypothesis basically is the status quo. It's assuming that what I'm trying to prove is not true. So it's utilizing variance in the five C's will not produce a better film than would leaving everything alone or static filming. My alternate hypothesis is what, what I was trying to prove. Uh, this is saying that utilizing variance will make, uh, produce a better quality film um, using utilizing variance in those five C's. Um, better, I defined as 50% of higher uh, proving, and approving was a rating of three or higher on the five, uh, one to five scale. Um, to determine significance, I used a couple of different tests. One was a t-test uh, statistics, which you use when the n is small. n is your number of trials. I only had 14 surveys, and you can't really make that representative of a population unless you use this t-test stati test statistic. Um, the probabilities are compared to a significance level. Uh, for my purposes, the significance level was 0.05, which is about 95% uh, confidence that we're going to have uh, that this is a true value. And if the p-value is lower than this, uh, than this test statistic, than alpha, uh, it is considered significant. A t-interval is used when n is small. Since, again, with only 14 uh, results, you cannot be certain that the true mean is the mean that you receive. So you create a range of means that, the range that your mean could fall in. Um, a larger confidence means a larger interval. If you want a 99% confidence, it's going to have to be wider than a 95% confidence uh, level. More statistics. Um, this is my actual test. Up at the top, you see all my givens. I calculated, um, that's called mu naught, right there. I calculated that as the highest possible score that I could receive and still have an insignificant result. That is, the status quo would still be true. That's the highest possible score that that would happen with. Um, I plugged all of this into my nice TI-89 calculator and got a p-value of 9.54 uh, times 10 to the negative 13 which is much, much smaller than 0.05. Therefore, I concluded that uh, there is a significant difference between the scores received and the expected scores. Um, so I accept my alternate hypothesis that these film techniques did improve the quality of the film. Interval of true means, again, you have the givens up at the top. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this on the last slide. X bar is just the mean. It's your average of the data. Um, so you have X bar there, 95% confidence level, and a T multiplier is gotten from your TI-89 again. You just do an inverse T test to get that. And the formula is given right there. It's your average plus or minus your T multiplier times the square root, or times the standard deviation divided by the square root of your number of trials. Basically what that says is your true, the average of the true means is going to fall within 4.655 and 5.059. Since my value was 4.857, it did fall within that, and it was hence a feasible result. So I am, again, accepting my alternate hypothesis. Um, average approval rating of these was 4.57 out of 5. 4.857. Uh, it was significant, and therefore I concluded that the C's enhanced the quality of the film. Evaluation. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this, and I learned a lot, and I have a, definitely have a new perspective on, on movies. I cannot watch a movie without wondering what they had to go through to get one shot or why they used a particular camera angle, because that went into a lot of uh, my planning as well. Uh, equipment, or lack thereof, as I mentioned earlier, I would have liked to have a better camera, some sound equipment, uh, a tripod would have been nice, um, just basic stuff like that. That made filming a little bit more difficult. Funding, we really didn't have a lot of money. It's pretty much whatever I put towards it. I spent probably about $300 for the camera, and that was about all I put forward uh, capital-wise. Time, I logged easily over 200 hours. I only recorded 200 hours for my, or for my research project. However, I spent certainly spent more time than that, um, and there really wasn't even enough time to do everything I wanted to do. So time is a very big ask. The more time, the better. Um, as I mentioned earlier, scheduling location problems, the little kids running around, Lots of editing, several, several, several hours, at least 40 hours of editing for the eight minute film. Um, and it must have been really painful for our actors. So that, that's a drawback. My evaluation continue. I would definitely do again, and I would recommend this to other people that should go out there and try to make your own film. Um, salaries can range from under 30,000 to several million, depending on if you're an actor, a cameraman, a stunt double. Um, a caterer, something along those lines. <laughs> um, not ruled out as a career path, but it's not likely. Um, it was very hectic, although I did, as I said, enjoyed it, so I'm not going to rule it out. But 
uh, continued study would be to isolate particular camera techniques. As I mentioned, those were the, there were five variables, and I only used, I really grouped them all together, so I'm not sure which one was affecting the film the most. And I would like to use a multitude of genres of film. We use a kung fu video for our pilot because we figured, hey, everybody likes kung fu. But it would probably be better to use a wide variety of genres, so that way we don't have genre bias. Like people who don't like westerns wouldn't rate a film lower, even though it used those techniques. And a larger sample size, again, uh, preferably something over the number of 30, you know, in the thousands. I would like to thank Ms. Moss Vader, I mean, Moss Bay Baderson, Moss Patterson, uh, for being the only teacher to act in as well as supervise our movie. And I'd like to thank Mr. Clemente uh, for research, uh, for supervising us in the school and the gymnastics room. My parents, uh, the Basilvex, Kyle and Clayton, the actors, Ms. Pohl, Ms. Mr. Shrad, Ms. Letts, and Madame McCoy. Ms. Pohl and Ms. Coy let me show the movie in their classes. Ms. Letts didn't give me detentions when I was continuously late to her class. And Mr. Stretch almost let me show my movie. Miss <laughs> um, Dirch, because uh, she really helped me out with my statistics. Stunt People, which is an online uh, forum kind of thing that we learned a lot of our stunts from. And all of the movies I've ever watched, especially Westerns, 80s comedies, Bruce Lee movies, and Starship Troopers. If you haven't seen that, I recommend you rent it. Um, everyone in and not in my credits also. So that'd be all of you guys and then some. So, without further delay, I would like to present my movie, November Juliet. We have.